I've been talking to Bonnie Keene of First Call, and she's been sharing how God helped her get through her clinical depression, and we're going to continue with our conversation at this time as she's sharing about what that was like and that depression was like, what her experience was like, and how God has made her stronger through it, and how you can be stronger too, how you can be more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Here's Bonnie. The only thing I knew, and this is kind of sounds silly, but the only thing I'd ever seen about depression was one flew over the cuckoo's nest with Jack Nicholson, yeah. movie, which was not, you know, very comforting, you know. Or, you know oh, no. I never knew what it was. It was just some weird thing that people went through that were weak. Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, I felt that way about divorce, too. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I never imagined a lot of things would happen in my life, but God has used all of them to teach me more about His grace mm-hmm. and His great love and how huge and wide He is and how I can depend on Him. And also, to be honest, um, to be aware that depression could be a part of my life, you know, episodes could come again. Mm-hmm. I know what the signs are now. Mm-hmm. I know that it doesn't have to have power over me now. Right. And for many people listening that say, well, you know, I didn't ever fully get over it. or I, Well, you know, that may be part of how you're made, and you may need to check in with your doctor every few months and make sure I do that. Uh, have people in your life that hold you accountable, but it, but it never has to be this scary, terrifying situation that you have, feel will take you over and destroy you again. Never. Because with understanding and wisdom, you know, it takes the power out of that scenario. And um, I'm just very, very grateful that God has, has used it and allowed me to talk to other people about it. And, and I've even um, recently uh, re- co-written a musical. The reason I was talking about Naomi, she's, we actually played this uh, Nan Gurley, a, a tremendous actress in a 30-plus year friendship of, um, of mine. Here in Nashville, she and I have written a, a two-woman musical called Women Who Dare to Believe. And we play 21 women from the scripture uh, with no set, no, no costumes. Just we, we have a 20-foot piece of scarlet material that represents the blood of Christ. Oh, it runs wow. from the Old Testament to the New Testament, that line of redemption. And we did all this research on these characters, and one of them was Naomi, and, and the depression she went through, <laughs> like, this is... You could relate. Really, yeah, and, you know, yeah. Ian plays Naomi in that scene, and she just lays on the floor and just put her head down and goes, leave me alone, I'm dying, I'm dying, you know. No. I'm a dried-up old husk, my life is over, God, you know. And I'm like, this is so relevant today, and we have a Bible study that goes with it. And anyone that's interested, I just, I'm just going to say, go to womenwhodaretobelieve.com, or go to my website and... You can you can link to it, but the word of God and the people of God were flesh and blood people. They still are that suffer here this side of heaven. We are going to suffer. We will never suffer on the other side. We will never suffer in His presence when we're fully alive in Him in heaven. But this side of heaven, we are going to carry a cross, and it's how we suffer that that brings great glory to Him. It's how we deal with depression and loss and injustice and things here this side of heaven and how we walk into forgiveness into those places and understanding it brings some great glory so i kind of see it as a strange honor <laughs> i don't know <laughs> um part of my thorn maybe in my side that i'll have or can share with other people but we all have it you know That's nobody's right. sitting around you you know this is a big misconception everybody in church you know Everybody's got something between That's right. them and God that is a place of great struggle. Yes. And and the more we bring that into the light, it takes the power out of it. That's right. And um, if you look around like I do sometimes, I go, everybody's got it together but me, and I'm just a mess. No, no, no. Everybody has, has, a, has a terrible struggle of some kind. That's right. And if they don't, I don't really know how they've lived very long. That's right. Here. No, it's so <laughs> true. We were, we were all born with this sin nature. And yes, when yes. we receive Christ, we, we yes. receive salvation, but we still have to struggle with that flesh daily. Yes, and he said, I'm with you in it. You That's know, right. Said, you will have trouble in this world. He didn't say, maybe you won't. No, you will have yeah. trouble, but don't be wor- you know, don't let it take you down. I've overcome the world, and I'm here with you. And so that's the great comfort for us, is is there is no shame when we struggle, but to to know that he's in the struggle with us, and and there is another side to the valley of the shadow. We go through it to the other side, and he's there on the other side, and it's a holy thing to go through those times with, with Jesus right next to you, whispering into your spirit, and and walking you through it. I mean, I, I personally can testify to that. He will not leave you. 
And even if you don't feel it, don't trust your feelings. That's right. Our trust feelings deceive words. us. That's right. I wanted to hear a little bit about your miracle, Brent. <laughs> oh, you must have read something. I yes, did I, in your biography. Yeah, I really um, uh, went through many years as a single mom, and dating again was, was a nightmare for me. I didn't do it well. I would get engaged and then call it off. <laughs> Just one did- after the other, my son... Graham was young. He he once said, "Mom, we'd be out of debt if you just kept some of the rings." <laughs> it's like really kind of embarrassing. I always say, "This is not the way to do it." And I think God God really was trying to get my attention to say, "You know, I want you to put me first because I thought I was, but for many of us, and I think people will identify, we want our life to look a certain way. We kind of expect that it will go a certain way, and when it doesn't, I mean, I caught myself in the trap of trying to. To make the, the the square fit into the round hole. Well, I'll make something else work. And God got my attention by saying, you know, you've got to seek me first. You've got to know me better. Mm-hmm. And you're going to let go of those expectations. And I wrote a song out of that time called The Day I Lay My Isaac Down. And um, and it was a moment for me of realizing I really wasn't, that, for, that great commandment, you know, you've got to know the Lord, seek him with your whole heart, mind, soul, and and everything else will fall into place. I finally just, I stopped myself down and just went, okay, God, I am going to bungee jump into uh, a place of trusting your word in you more than ever, no matter what my life looks like. No matter if there's never anyone in my children's lives. I wanted a strong man in their lives. I wanted a godly marriage. And about two years after I made that decision and really kind of stopped thinking about it, kind of going, I don't know if I ever want to marry again. I, I'm fine. <laughs> Being God, this is good. Um God, of course, the great Redeemer, I did pray. I said, if I ever marry again, I really want it to be a story of redemption. Um, a wonderful man in my life who's a great engineer has actually won eight Grammy, seven Grammys, my husband. I was nominated, never won one. He's got seven for engineering and production. I said, he's a little bit into idolatry. But, I mean, he, he wouldn't tell you this, so I can. But we'd known each other for over 20 years, and his wife left him and took his son. He didn't know that it wasn't his biological child. Long story short, the little boy was four and a half, and Brent loved him dearly, but the child was taken out of his life. His wife left. He was devastated. A lot of us that knew him because of doing studio work were devastated for him. I never imagined he and I would end up married. We were always friends and known each other for 20 years, knew our spouses, you know, I mean, ex-spouses. And God, in his great mercy, um, orchestrated us into this beautiful second marriage and standing around us were 200 people. Just, I mean, it was very informal. I could turn around and touch half of my friends, and they were hooping and hollering. And, and a lot of them had prayed for me for a long time and praying for Brent. And um, he, I really do call him a miracle man because he, he came into my life at exactly the time for Courtney, my daughter, when she needed a man to really speak um, great affirmation. You know how as a mom you can say, you look great, baby, mm-hmm. I love you. you know. But you've got to have a father that says, you look great, but you're not leaving ha- the house looking that great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she was almost 15. My son was like 10, almost 11. And and um, Brent really continues to be my miracle. And now second marriages have their own challenges too. But you know what? It's a it's a strong, godly marriage. And um, I, I think God is just always ready to surprise us. Um, as Ephesians, that was my verse, and it was on our wedding invitation, with a more more than we can imagine or dream or ask. And so um, he continually does that for me and definitely has done that with me and Brent. Well, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. And thank you so much for sharing your testimony with us today about your depression, how God brought you through that and made you stronger. And he blessed you with your miracle, Brent, and and just all that he's doing in your life. And He really is continually surprising me, yes. That's beautiful. And I pray for for those listening and those struggling. My heart goes out to you. You're not alone. Um, there are many people that, that would pray with you and, and lift you up and help you through, so don't give up. And, Bonnie, could you give those websites again, your website and yes. then the website for your uh, musicals for women? Yes. Um, my website is really easy. It's just my name, bonniekeen.com. Mm-hmm. So it's B-O-N-N-I-E-K-E-E-N. And then the musical and the Bible study is womenwhodaretobelieve.com. Women who dare to believe dot com or bonniekeen.com. 
do you travel around with your play? And Yes, we're just beginning to do. Uh, we had a debut in a D.C. church in March. We're at Music California in, in April, and we'll be out this fall, and we're beginning to book dates for next year and are really just kind of um, humbled and... It's kind of like having a baby. You don't know if anybody will think it's pretty, you know. (laughs) We worked on this ourselves, conceptualized and wrote it, and then wrote the study. And um, because we felt like God just gave us this very clear vision of what to do with it Mm -hmm. and didn't know, you know, it's like I told Nan, let's serve the work, and then we'll see what happens. We really uh, had no company behind us, nothing. And people have just been picking up on it like crazy and contacting us. And so we'd love to hear from you if you think it's something your church might be interested in or your women's group, I'm telling you, it's just, um, it's a real piece of theater, It's it's which is something, we both have a theater background, and we wanted to do a serious, really strong piece of theater for the church, but we, uh, the study is very unusual, too, so I don't know how to describe it. Go on the, go on the website and listen to some of it and look at it. It's I, And I answer all the emails that come to my website, so if you want to send me something, I'd be happy to hear from you as well. I think that's how you got to me. Yeah, that is. I was reading your story, and I thought, I want to talk to Bonnie. That'd be a great person to have on God at Work. So thank you for being so gracious and being on my program. I'm honored. Well, thank you, Janet. And also, one more thing, thank you for remembering First Call. Oh, always. Uh, Marty, the tenor, Marty McCall, and Mel Tunney, the original alto, and I are still doing some dates together, which is so sweet, after all those years. And we love hearing from people that still um, that music still touches. So thank you for remembering that. So you still sing together at times? Yes, and we're talking about trying to do more, which is really fun. Marty's at a church in McLean Bible Church and has been there almost 10 years on staff in D.C., and Mel has her own ministry, and I have my own, but the three of us are thinking, you know, it's so much fun to get together. Oh, yeah. That's come to really Cleveland. Really... Yeah, we'd love to. Yeah, come to we'd Cleveland. To. What does it take to get you to Cleveland? Asking us. <laughs> Asking you? you know, honestly, we are really praying about about offering churches and pastors something that we've never done before. And I don't know, I know Keith Green used to do this, but we've been praying and talking about just saying, if you want us to come and you paid our way to get there, we could come for free. Wow. To serve your people, because so many churches have been hurt in the past by, um, I don't know, you know, financial difficulties in bringing in an artist, or churches right now are hurting because of the economy. Right and struggling to stay afloat. And we, we got together the other day, and all three of us, you know, in different areas, kind of had the same leading. And it was interesting, so we all three said, yeah, this is, might be something we would really like to do, and just let God use it. And oh, that's yeah. kind of a wild idea. But Oh, I love it. it. You know, what, what, what's the worst that could happen? We'd have a wonderful time. That's right. And, you know, we would, we would serve the church and, and hum, you know, be just give back. And I don't know. It's something really fun that we're praying about doing, so... Well, you keep praying about it. I'm going to pray about it, and we'll see what we can do to get you to Cleveland. Well, thank you, Bonnie, so much for sharing, and look forward to talking to you again. Please, anytime, anytime. God bless you. God bless you as well. You've been listening to God at Work on WNPQ The Light, 95.9.